beast, stalker, giant, stalker, dragon, stalker, crypt, stalker, demon, stalker, rip, stalker, grown, stalker, grip, stalker, scourge, stalker, wind runner. I'm a pony, leap, skill, hunter. A death dealer, a life stealer. That's just the cost of being awesome. Song. Welcome to episode two, 211 of the Hunting Party Podcast. I'm Dark Brew from thebrewhall.com and the Brew Hall on Twitter. I'm Delirium from Thrill of the Wild, the Warcraft Hunters Union, and at Delirium Hunts on Twitter. I'm Bendak from Eyes of the Beast, Blizzard Watch, and Bendak Wow on Twitter. Today is Sunday, February the 15th, 2015, and we are broadcasting live on Twitch TV. You can participate in the live chat room where our lovely moderator, Ali Sander, is there to take your questions. And Artemis Howell is not joining us this week because she is knee deep in the race for world first with with her new guild so um but as soon as that's over we'll she'll be back and she'll be able to talk talk about uh black rock foundry and her thoughts on the, the progression this time around and solar is maybe maybe he'll be here we're not sure what would happen to solar this morning but he is uh it is like seven in the morning where he's at so i'm not you know and he's young so all right, so we, we got a good show today. Lots to talk about. We've got Pat Six Foot One, Black Rock Foundry, um, to talk about. So a lot of good things there. But one one quick announcement: uh, the Hunting Party Podcast crew was interviewed for the episode 133 of the Realm Maintenance Podcast. Now a bunch of us uh, got together and, and recorded that show last week. So I think it'll be released uh, this weekend. I'm not sure what their their schedule is. Do any of you know uh, when they release their podcast? I should know, but I don't. I have no idea. No idea. I just saw him tweet that he was posting it next week. Okay. So, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, thanks to to Ro for for inviting us on onto onto his show. That was that was a good time. I I, I enjoyed it. It's nice to to get out and you know participate in some of these other podcasts and, and see how, if nothing else, from a technical standpoint, how they do things. But but that was a good time. And I think Delirium, you were there, and then I think Artemis and Solar were there. So we missed you on that one, Bende. Uh So what else do we have? Um, Blizzard Watch. So yeah, last week uh, we mentioned that WoW Insider was closing its doors, but most people's everybody knows that that Blizzard Watch is now the new WoW Insider, and you're you're um, signed up, and you're one of their columnists, and you've got a new. It's not Scattered Shots anymore. So why don't you talk about the new Hunter column that you're doing? Yeah, so I renamed it to Locked and Loaded. Just, I don't know, I just felt like, you know, giving it a new name. And I also did like a a straw poll on Twitter and like lock, Locked and Loaded won by like, I don't know, by like two thirds or something like that. So I thought, oh, what the hell, I'll just go with my gut and rename it. Seems like not many people are like, oh, no, it's not Scattered Shots anymore. So... Yeah, and we had a sort of a little bit of an internal discussion too, because as everyone knows, you know, scattered shot is no longer part of the the hunter toolkit. So <clears throat> it just, I don't want to say it seemed inappropriate, but it would just seemed weird having a column named after uh, an ability that hunters no longer have. Certainly. Yeah, of course. There's also my site, which is named after a ability that we no longer have. True. True. Th- but that one's a little different though, because Eyes of the Beast is just one of those. It's there's something s- nostalgic about that. You know, that was actually a. Yeah. It wasn't like a big damage ability. That was just a cool thing that they that we had um, that everybody misses that we'll probably never ever see again, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Because I, I know they said that they've had that they would have to recode it, and I guess I don't know why they wouldn't. I I can't. I don't know how hard it would be for them to do that, but I guess it's a question of you know. Is there a really enough value uh, given back to hunters where you can just take control of your pet? I mean, I'm just trying to think what some of the uses were. I mean, were there were there uses for that in encounters that any of you guys could think of, or just you, pet tanking? Yeah, you know, so just you pet tanking. Get your yeah, movement down perfect. But I don't remember much outside of that. Of course, at the time you couldn't um, you couldn't like move your pet wherever you wanted. Mm-hmm. But. I mean, it's not. That's you can do that now. It's not as good as Eyes of the Beast was, but at least it's something. No, no, the pet move ability is okay. I mean, I, I know what you're. Um, but yes, Eyes of the Beast, where you have complete granular control over it. Plus, it was just fun to to have your pet and just run around, and see how far you could. <laughs> yeah, it was it. mostly a fun thing, just to yes. fool around while you're waiting for stuff to happen in raid or something. Mm-hmm. 
So the locked and loaded column, is it going to be once a week or how often is that going to be? Uh, I think for the, at least for the first month, it's just biweekly, but after that, it might move to weekly again. So just trying to still get everything settled and, you know, with the schedules and all that. Yeah. So yeah. the next one should probably be, uh, this coming Friday. Cool. Yeah, well, it's great that they, uh, that you know, it seems like, you know, WoW Insider was just, it was, it was sad to see that go, but it just seems like Blizzard Watch right now is in a, so much, so much of a better place. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've, they've hired like so many writers <clears throat> now. Like, I think they've got all, all the classes covered now, I think, except for priests, maybe. I'm not sure. But, uh, and a bunch of the old columns are coming back, like, um, officers' quarters and stuff saw like that. that. The yeah. first officer's quarters that came out was right on the money. That was I, I really appreciated that uh, column. Yeah, and a lot, and of course, everyone was talking about the 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 one about the the raiding guilds. What if uh, raiding guilds were honest? And that was that yeah. was just unbelievably <laughs> good. <laughs> That's a must read for if you do any kind of raiding or in a guild, which is pretty much everybody that plays plays World of Warcraft should give that a read because it, it was it, it was funny but true at the same time. Yeah. If you go to the site, it's just search for um, if rating guilds were actually honest, I think it's called. Yeah. But, you know, back to what I was just saying about Blizzard Watch. Yeah, it just seems like now, um, you know, as long as they can keep the get the support and the funding to keep it going, they've got a lot more control. And like I said, they've hired a lot of more people back. It's going to be, a, I think, much better than than what we saw with WoW Insider now. It's, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, there'll be coverage of other Blizzard games too. Just right now, it's still mostly WoW, but mm -hmm. the plan is to expand that to more Hearthstone and uh, Diablo and Heroes, StarCraft. <laughs> right. But that's cool. So, well, yeah. So, congratulations to to you and and to them, and I look forward to reading everything that they 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 publish now. Yeah, um, the first column was pretty cool. It's, it got like almost five hundred comments. Did, is that right? Is that a lot for for a while? I know WoW Insider, you guys get tons and tons of comments, but well, that's for a class column, yeah. Like usually, class columns would get like I don't know, fifty two hundred comments. So that's it was pretty insane. Cool. Well, let's see what else happened. Black Rack Foundry. One, we can talk about that a little bit. I was I was hoping to have Solar around or Artemis to talk more in, more in depth about their their experience, but. Mythic obviously opened uh, this past week on February 10th, so the race for World First is is going on. So, our, what's the the progress now? I think last night there were several guilds that were eight of ten was the best that we were seeing. Do you guys know? Uh, actually, I think there's like um, thirteen guilds at eight out of ten now. Okay, yeah, we've got one just method at nine out of ten. So method did creep up to nine out of ten. I wasn't I wasn't sure. So. And I put that in there last night, so that just happened overnight, I guess, or sometime yesterday. They must. Have yeah, I'm not it. sure when it happened. I just pulled up the site right now. There they are. So oh, yeah, I, that must have just happened because I refreshed it like ten minutes ago, and that wasn't there. <laughs> well, in that case, congrats to uh, you know Method Roger and all the ghost guys for their yeah. latest kill. <laughs> yep, so far. So we'll see. I'd be curious to see how how long Black can takes to do now if he'll be a straightforward fight for them or if that's going to be you know one of those long is it going to be like a you know one or two week <laughs> of those guys of those guilds you know banging their heads yeah. on on him in, in in mythic mode yeah it was a really interesting so far with uh paragon it looks like they did a lot of heroic farming before going into mythics and for a while, mm -hmm. they, they just shot ahead. You know, they were clearing so much faster than anybody else did. And it looks like once they got to the later bosses, everybody kind of hit a wall at the same time. So we had uh, everybody at 7 of 10 for quite a while. Then about a day of everybody at 8 of 10. I wonder why they did that. Well, I wonder if they did the heroic farming just to get used to the encounters. I mean, the gear in there, I think, is only 680, right, compared to the Mythic High Mall, which I thought was 685. But I thought the Mythic High Mall. Yeah, that's... That's correct. I think the getting people trinkets, they're you know the best trinket they can. Right. And okay. Yeah. Tri tier, those trinkets tier in the tier in the tier gear. I keep forgetting about that. That's right. So that that would make sense. So you do the trinkets tier gear, and you get a, a some Look comfort, the, yeah. comfortability. You know, you get a little bit of more. Get used to those encounters. 
Uh, even though the mechanics are, will be different in Mythic, at least you get used to the environment, how much space you have to work with, and those kinds of things. So, yeah, not, not a bad idea at all. Yeah, it's been a good fight. A lot, you know, a lot more interesting, I think, than that first half tier was with Highmall. And I've been having fun uh, keeping WoW progress open on my computer all day. So. Now, I'm, I, none of us are doing any kind of Mythic rating, but, I mean, have you guys rated uh, much in Blackrock Foundry? Uh, so the new guild I joined, we've just focused on normal, took a stab at heroic last week, but we decided we would maybe try and clear normal first and then get people to some of those tier bonuses and then then plow through heroic. But I like it. I think it's a good rate so far. I like what I've seen uh, so far. Yeah, yeah I've just done. Fun. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> I just, I, I've had fun. Uh, we've cleared through, I don't know how much of heroic. It's been going a good bit slower than we had anticipated but uh i run into a couple of roadblocks uh i think there are a lot of fights here that are a lot less based on you know how much dps can you pump out really quick and a lot more based on you know everybody staying alive and actually doing the mechanics which is probably a good thing in general especially for hunters as we thrive under those situations but also kind of forcing everyone to play the game and not just tunnel so it's is I'm enjoying most of the encounters so far that we've seen, and uh, yeah, it's some of them are a little silly, some of them are more uh, intense. So it's been a good time. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed them too. I've only done normals as well, but um, I think they're pretty nice. Did did any of you guys suffer from that? There's all these people talking about having motion sickness on Hans and Franz. Have you guys seen any of that? Mm -hmm. No, no, we killed Hans and Franz last night, and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just uh, getting out of plates. I didn't notice if there was any motion sickness. Honestly, like I said, I haven't done them on heroic. We just did them on normal, but no, um, no issues whatsoever. In fact, it's it's a very easy fight on normal. I find our right. we that was, you know, we ha very rarely do we go in there and have a uh, one shot one shot where the first look. Uh, of a boss, we go and kill it. And, and Hans and Franz was that one for us on, on normal. <clears throat> so, um, but I never had any issues with motion sickness. I don't know if it's because, you know, I had to do those conveyor belts on in Siege Master in Siege of Orgrimmar, but um, no, I mean, that, that was just a fun fight. I, I really, really enjoy that fight more, more than I thought I would. Yeah, I ended up, we, uh, I was there for two pulls of Hans and Franz. And uh, the first time we wiped, I uh, I managed to not get hit by anything. I was doing great, having a good time. I'd never, you know, really seen it before, but I uh, I decided to, you know, go in and really try my best. And the second time, I don't know if it was RNG or what, but the time that we killed it, I got hit by at least, I don't know, 5,000 plates dropping yeah. on my head. I have no idea how they kept me alive, but <laughs> it was a good time regardless. Yeah, and... Someone in the Sir, Sir Jarek in the chat room is saying the plates won't hit you if you move slightly left or right. So I don't know if there's if you can stand. And there's there's, there's a little bit of spacing in the, between belts, and I don't know if that really can protect you or not. Um, yeah, the, I, you have to be actually on a different belt to not get hit by the plate. It yeah. overlaps the area where you don't move. But yeah, it is only just you know you move a foot over and you're fine. And I haven't had to try it yet, but I I don't know if deterrence will protect you from a blow. Or not either. Yeah, I never cast it soon enough. Once I realized I wasn't going to make it out of the area. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely can't stand like in that little space between them either. You just no. get hit by both of them. <laughs> yeah, it was a little rougher night than usual last night with the um, consumption rate for me. I guess <laughs> oh, <laughs> it might have made right. some extra problems on that fight. But. Yeah, that's definitely that. Yeah, I like that fight. That's definitely a, a fun fight. Uh, audio, you know, from the bosses is fun too. Although I'm, I'm too busy focusing on plates and dodging things to, to pay attention to what they're saying, but it's it's fun. Oh yeah, I'll have to do it. The volume turned up next mm -hmm. week. And then there's Beast Lord, which I like just because he's a hunter. I like yeah, him too. I was, I was thinking the same thing, and it's like, oh, I wish you could tame some of these pets and. Uh, <laughs> That's a crazy fight. There's a lot going on there with the, the spears and the pets, lots of AoE. Um, oh, yeah. It's like paradise for barrage. Yeah. Lots of room to cheese. 
So do you guys do beast mastery on that? Like I, I, I'm mostly using survival right now. I wish I had like a, a, a tri spec option instead of just, I, I was, I, you know, there, there are times where I wish I could just have all three at my disposal in, in a raid, but I've been going with beast mastery and survival as the two specs that I'm, I'm carrying. And for that beast Lord, I decided for, because of the, all the ads and everything, I was using beast mastery. And I, I, the beast cleave in this dungeon is amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, I went survival for the Beast Lord um, because everything was so spread out. I just mm -hmm. couldn't see a way to get Beast Cleave on enough targets. Um, and, you know, be able to, you just maybe a little cheesy, but uh, throwing a dot up on each of the pins gets you a little extra boost there. <laughs> so, yeah, I stuck with survival there. I also really like the Chromog fight. I don't know. I just just you're in this giant room. It just feels pretty epic. I don't know. I had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah, Chromark. So he's he's the end boss of of that one ring. He's kind of like um, who's the guy in Ulduar that I'm Kolagarn. He's he's yeah. one of those where you just he's this giant kind of ogre, Orgron, I guess. And it's just you know you just see him from the waist up, <clears throat> and yeah, he's he's amazing. Yeah, that's not a bad fight at all. I like uh, Barrage is kind of fun on that fight when everyone's gripped in the. Yeah, hands. I always make sure I go to one of the far edges of the, all yep. those hands so you can hit everything. Yeah, so in case, yeah, there's, for those that may not have seen it, there's a phase where you'll see these yellow runes appear on the ground and everybody in the raid has to get into a rune and then your hand will come up and grip you and you, you have to DPS people out, including yourself. And you can DPS yourself out of, of the hand, but that's the idea. It's always, I don't know what the strategy is. We usually just decided everyone kind of on their own like I said, I will hit barrage to try and attack as many as I can, but I try and get myself out first. And, you know, we had different strats where he said, well, maybe we should try and get the healers all to be in one place and focus them out first. But since they have the weakest DPS, but um, I think we're at a point, at least with normal, where we don't really need to do that. We can just kind of, everyone can get themselves out and then the DPS will go and clean up uh, who's ever left stuck in there. But it's a good fight. That's actually a pretty good fight. And there are a number like that. Like, I see a fight like that. I'm not really sure where the, the pain points are for the other classes. But from a from a hunter perspective, it's really not that hard. There's not that much to do other than avoid stuff, which isn't hard to avoid, and then uh, DPS. So I'm not sure where the – it must be on, like, the healers and tanks that have uh, a lot that they have to pay attention to that makes it difficult. Yeah, have you guys noticed any fights where it's like, oh, that's the hunter job or that type of thing? Like compared to other raids or high mall even uh not yet mm -hmm. i haven't yeah i mean either it just seems like yes yeah, it's, it's, it's it's pretty fun as a hunter so far i mean i'm trying to think in which fights i've done gruel i mean there's not, nothing much to worry about with with him <clears throat> there's no special job there it's really just paying attention and, and avoiding slams and rocks um only thing with that there's a little bit of rng i've noticed with with gruel and occasionally you can kind of get boxed in by the uh, the little rings where the stuff where the rocks drop from the ceilings and i've had we've had situations where the group i'm in is there's one on the left one on the right and one behind us and there's not much room to run if he does like a slam in, in front of you so <clears throat> but other than that that's not too bad of a fight nothing special for hunters there um, and or gorgers another one that that took some getting used to He's yeah that's the, a bizarre one yeah, my group made the mistake of working on Orgorger before doing Hans and Franz and Beast Lord, which is, you should really yeah. do the other two first. Yeah, yeah that's we what did we did too. too. Yeah, we did Gruel and then we headed straight to Orgorger and banged our heads on them, but then we, that's okay, we, we've got him him now. But I'm glad to hear other people uh, found that as a problem. But yeah, I mean, again, the, the first phases are easy right when you, we, we just kind of stay stacked up and then move right when he's about to drop that stuff on the ground it, and it's, it, it's all about the maze phase this is i call it really and just trying to <clears throat> keep your camera zoomed out long enough so you can see him and kind of figure out which direction he's going to roll around in and so you can avoid that but uh deterrence is fine you know you can use deterrence deterrence will get you out of a out of some jams on that fight i've noticed <clears throat> In fact, you can almost use it to your advantage to <laughs> just, you know, not have to think too much and just know that, all right, here he's about to run me over and hit deterrence and you'll be okay. 
And then um, I'm trying to think what else. We talked about Beast Lord. I've done him. Uh, the the train operator. That's a fun fight too. Operator Thorgar. Thogar. <clears throat> but again, nothing special for hunters. Just lots of ads, lots of AOEs, and lots of paying attention to which doors the trains are going to come come running through at any moment. What do you guys think about that fight? Yeah, I haven't gotten to him yet. So. Yeah, me either. I haven't done him yet. So the way it works is, you know, there's the one boss, and you're on this <clears throat> set of train tracks, and there's four tracks, and every so often, and I think there's probably even a pattern to it, but usually you'll get two trains coming out of the the different doors, so you might get doors one and four, there'll be a train, so you got to move to the tracks where there isn't <clears throat> a train coming. And some of the trains will stop, and then they'll dump off a bunch of ads, and you got to take down the ads. And then there'll be uh, there's a train that drops off a, a gunner, so a guy that sits in the cannon. So obviously that's in terms of jobs, that's obviously a job for for all range DPS, not just hunters. But we can certainly take out those those gunners pretty pretty easily. And then at one point, you'll get trains coming out of doors two and three, which are the two middle tracks, and we you split your raid up into two groups because both those trains will drop off ads and then each group will handle their ads and then it's a lot of back and forth so you know if you can have someone that can call out which door the trains are coming and tell you where to move that helps but uh you're, you're better off just paying it the boss mods are pretty good about telling you uh all right train coming on door one train on track track one track two so it's it's a busy fight, a lot of AOE. I use Beast Mastery, and the, and the Beast Cleave damage on that one is 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 fun. That's pretty a lot a lot a lot of good good numbers coming out of that with with, with Beast Cleave. So, yeah, it's a fun fight. It takes a little getting used to, but I, I like that one a lot. But at least for me, I think other than that, I don't know that we've gotten too much further at this point. What about Blast Furnace? Did you do that? I have not tried him yet. I think they may have done him on Thursday, but I wasn't available last week, so I have not seen uh, Blast Furnace. Have you tried that one yet? Uh, no, it looks like another Beast Cleave yeah. fight. But I think it's a... Which which one was Blast Furnace? It's, um, it's just like a bunch of ads, and you release like this fire elemental at the end for Phase 3. Oh, yeah, I must not have done it yet. You have to drop the bombs fun. to destroy the furnace or whatever. Yeah, he's the boss that's kind of at the bottom of one of the, uh, the areas. You can <clears throat> you can see him as you're running around from one area to the next. He's, he's, it's like a big furnace. <laughs> yeah, other than the ridiculously long runbacks, I have kind of enjoyed the layout of Black Rock. Or just, you know, getting to see things from overhead and mm -hmm. picture of where you're going. But I, I, you know, like I said, I think it's a very well designed raid. The, and I think it's designed to be <clears throat> progressive within the raid, such that the end bosses of each wing are going to be a little bit harder than the than the bosses that precede it. And so the idea is, you might go around and you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go, which is always nice. But I think there's, uh, you might be better off taking some of the, I'll call them like the the under bosses, if you will, you know, rather than just clearing out an entire wing, at least until you get some things on farm, but you might be better off just hitting the the, the, the lower bosses and then working on some of the, the end bosses. And, yeah, I just you know, want, I just, I just want a trinket so bad. Like I've tried so many times to get the butcher one and now I'm trying for the Chromog one. It's just like, oh, I cannot catch a break with my trinket. Oh, so you so you don't even have so you haven't even gotten the one off the trinket or off the butcher yet. You don't have the hero, the scales. No, I oh, mean, dude. and I've you, I've I've never seen it drop, and I've used like fourteen or fifteen bonus rolls, I think. No. So yeah, yeah, that is some bad luck. <laughs> and you can even get that from your uh, high mall mission too. I mean, and I'm trying to. Rub it in, but I mean, I got one from a from a high mall mission that I had. I know to you eat. told me you disenchanted I had to it. Eat. I was so pissed because <laughs> I looked at the. It's like of all the things, because there was a lot of stuff I could have used of all the. And I know you can't get weapons from those missions, but. Uh. <clears throat> but yeah, there's. I'm trying to think with the good trinkets coming out of Black Rock Furnace. Are there's there's one that 
has a bunch of it looks like it's very similar to scales of doom i think it's got a, it's got a bunch of multi-strike on it it's on use instead of a proc but it yeah. is on use yes and then there's one from black hand which is uh it's agility and then it has like a proc that gives you crit and like sl- slowly goes up until at the very end it's like an insane amount of crit that's a pretty nice one too mm. so i've got a uh <clears throat> slight it's not off topic really question for you but i mean we're, we're, there's a lot more multi-strike now on the gear that's coming out of black rock foundry which is which is nice right because i mean other than because <clears throat> it really is beneficial for certainly survival and and, and beast mastery. I mean, are you finding though that you're like I find that my crit levels though are still much higher than uh, multi strike at this point. And I don't know if that's always going to be the case or if there's scenarios where you can get that multi strike way up there. I mean, we start with a base of what fifteen percent without yeah. a. Are you talking about your rating, your multi strike written crit rating? Yeah, I mean, in terms of getting the stat higher than the other, and the reason I'm sort of asking is I realize this. I usually eat the the feast that you get out of the uh, the barn. You know, that everyone puts down those those uh, feasts. Yeah, but it, it, I'm just wondering if it could ever get my multi strike high enough that it would give me multi strike as a buff versus am I always going to get crit because that's always the highest seems to be the highest secondary stat. <laughs> yeah, I think you're just going to have to keep eating crips. Yeah, so that's those what's right. Like, I've been starting to bring some of the the calamari crepes food just because it gives a hundred multi strike. Yeah. I've got the rest. Yeah, but you can there. also just take off your certain pieces of gear until your multi strike is higher. Oh, and eat the food then. Ooh, that's kind of annoying, but it's something to do. I never thought huh. about that. That's a great tip. So if you learn nothing else from this show, this that that right there, I think makes this show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's weight. that much work to just grab some of those calamari crepes. I know. But hey, I'll I'll do anything to save a few gold or not have to log in and fish and cook and whatever. And with the equipment manager, that's got to be pretty easy, right? You can just have a, a one button push to take off your gear to eat your food. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, I think as you get more black wrap gear, that'll change. There's mm-hmm. so much crit crit on the high mall gear, so there was there there is. <clears throat> um. But that that's that's a good tip. I'll have to play around with that and see what configuration it is. I'll be I'll be doing that now. <laughs> yeah, I just kept some pieces in my bag from uh, Garrison missions that were like that rolled multi strike and I just throw those on and then eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> awesome. But yes, overall, I think Black Rock Foundry. So I think it's 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 fun. I'm 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 enjoying it. I'm enjoying the the progression, and I'm hoping we'll get to do heroic sooner than late, than later. I don't know. I know we, we stepped in there last week and we were very close on gruel, but something about, I don't you, know, you just get in there and people know the mechanics, but the damage you take is just so much higher that I think that it's a, it's harder for the healers and tanks to adjust than it is the DPS when you go from normal to heroic at that point. Hmm. But, and I'm still trying to get the tier gear. Have you gotten your all oh, gotten tier gear yet? I've gotten one piece. I don't have a single piece yet. It's a little rough going. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Man, I can't wait for that survival two piece. So much fun on PTR, but live is just without. Yeah, I'm kind so, of looking forward to the BM ones too. All those extra bestial wraths and million pets attacking your target. <laughs> yeah, the BM looks fun. <clears throat> I like that the 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 opportunity to get more beast steel rast in there, and then the idea, and of course, you know, black arrow automatically proccing lock and load is nice too. So, is there any change in thinking or strategy with that particular two piece? I mean, do you, I guess you'd always want to fire off. I would think you'd want to fire explosive shot. You know, if he's you know get that on cooldown before you fire your black arrow. Yeah, I think mean, only if it's if they're coming off at the exact same time, then you'll mm-hmm. fire an explosive shot first. But in right. general, you do want to get as many black arrows as possible in the fight. So yeah, I'm just trying be to using it on cooldown. What the strategy was for that? So you know, if, if explosive shots, you know, if they're because on the one hand, I mean, you know, if you fire explosive shot, it's it's on cooldown, and you know, you're gonna get to fire it right again with black arrow. But I just wasn't wasn't sure, you know, if it was worth delaying black arrow for that situation. And you're saying probably not. 
Yeah, I mean, sense. I think if it's if you got one, you know, if it's one GCD, maybe two GCDs, you're not going to hurt yourself much. Mm -hmm. But once you go more than that, you're not really gaining much. Fair enough. But you had mentioned 6.1. Why don't we top down and, and talk about that? Because uh, there was a new build this week. It was marked as release ready. I don't know that they'll do it this Tuesday, though. Do you think they'll release it this Tuesday or you think they'll wait another week? I sure oh. hope they wait. I think they're going to wait because a lot of these buffs that they uh, recently announced, which we'll get to, um, I don't think they're even in that build yet. Oh, they're not. Okay, I just assumed that they were. Uh, I know they, 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 were, they were mentioned in the patch notes, but um, and I figured with the release build that they would have put them in there, but maybe maybe they've got a little another minor patch to do. But yeah, I think releasing it Tuesday would just be a little bit um, too soon for that. Plus, it's, it would be smack dab in the middle, maybe now towards the end of the race for World First, and I, I think it could... I don't know if Blizzard really cares about how much they care about that, but I know that's something the players pay attention to and that could, you know, you don't want to, and granted the changes affect everybody. It doesn't, you know, favor necessarily one guild over the other, but it would be nice to not the way those guys min max, who knows with certain buffs, they might want to change up their composition <laughs> yeah, slightly to account for those types of changes. So it would make sense that they would might want to wait Give the give those guilds another week, another chance at uh, killing Black Hand before uh, before they release patch six point one. Mm -hmm. But as as we did say, there were some 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 buffs that came in, uh, they were giving for hunters. So um, I don't, Bendik, you want to talk about some of those the Beast Mastery one? Sure. So uh, these are in addition to the talent buffs which we talked about last time. So uh, improved focus fire, which is a uh, BM perk, um, and now when you um, use it, it gives you 8% attack power per frenzy stack. So if you can use it at 5 stacks, you get 40% attack power boost, which is, right now is 25%, so that's pretty significant. And when, oh my goodness, 40% yeah. I know. attack power is insane. <laughs> that's a crazy when, buff. I know, and when Warlords launched, it was only 10%. Right, <laughs> yeah. That's right. They bumped it up to twenty five percent. Yeah. Now, now we're up to forty. That's that's awesome. That's really nice. It's it's a significant buff. Like, um, Simulation Craft just put out a new build, and I just ran it quickly this morning just to see. And in my personal gear, that buff alone was two k DPS for BM. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like between this buff and the. Two piece, the Beast of Wrath two piece. We're just going to be using both of it. You know, use Focus Fire as soon as you get to five stacks, or if your uh, Frenzy stacks are about to fall off, just use it anyways. And uh, we'll be using Beast of Wrath as soon as possible, also. And it's, yeah. And it's, it's Keldul. Be and, city all the time. Yeah, Keldul's pointing out in, in the chat room. He said it's more RNG pain for the BM Frenzy. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Steady Focus is now a must for uh, for BM. It's just getting for, those for, frenzy stacks faster is going to be crucial. Yeah. For AOE, I'd say it's a must. For single target, I, I think it's a toss-up between that and Dire Beast. I'm really curious. You know, this doesn't have the uh, the focus change that Beast of Wrath has, but this feels like a much bigger DPS increase buff mm -hmm. than, uh, you know, this is a bigger cooldown now than Beast of Wrath is, which is weird. But I, I'm not going to complain. It's nice. All that attack power. Yeah. And then we had some changes from Marksman as well, which, you know, people were kind of upset. Well, not upset, but they were, it, was, they were, it was sad, right? I mean, Warlord released, it was the the the, 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 the go-to spec, and then it kind of fell into becoming sort of that red-headed stepchild mode again. And <clears throat> But now it's, it's getting some more buffs. Um, why don't you talk about that a little bit, Delirium? All right, so we start with a nerf, actually, to careful aim is now increasing the critical strike chance of steady shot, focusing shot, and aim shot by 50%, which it was 60% uh, for most of Warlords. And, of course, before that was 80% when it was only the uh, first 20% of the fights. Um, and Chimera shot, to kind of make up for it, is being increased by 30.4%. 
which uh, I don't actually remember. I don't have my spreadsheet in front of me, but I think that puts us up to about 605 or 610% weapon damage. I don't know if either of you have looked at that. Uh, but it's, it's Chimera Shot is huge, especially uh, when you get two of them on that cleave fight. And last, Sniper Training is now 25% more effective. So I believe that puts our base at 5%. And then we get... Uh, uh, I can't even do the math in my head, so I won't pretend to. But, you know, 25% more per stat that you get. Yeah, so, so what does that really mean? How do, I wonder what that translates to for the sniper training when they say it's 25% more effective. Because sniper training doesn't just increase, you know, damage. It also increases the range. I mean, are we getting this? So is that going to boost the range at, at which you can stand and fire as well, I guess? Yeah, I it should. It should. And the, and the crit damage will also go up there. So it just makes it a little bit more important to keep sniper training up all the time. But it still isn't going to be a huge buff for any, you know, at any point. It's good, but not, you know, ridiculously amazing or anything. And, you know, it's not like Beast Mastery's 16% base or 18% base now or anything like that. And I think that that chem, chem shot is uh, mostly what's pulling marksmen up so much. Yeah, I was going to say it's really it's the it's the chimera shot that seems to be the the big buff there. Whereas the <clears throat> as you as you said the then the, there's the nerf to careful aim, but the sniper training helps to offset that a little bit. I would think because of the you know you you'll do more. Your crit damage will be higher. Your chance to crit will be less, but when you do, you'll be hitting a little bit harder than than what you were before. Yeah, so I think most MM hunters who've stuck with um, marksmen even after the nerfs back in 6.0.2 or whenever that was, uh, most of them have been using a 43% kind of crit soft cap, um, and now that'll be raised up to 53%. So you know your your crit is a little bit more valuable on your gear. Um, but that's not much in return for having less crit overall in the fight. So mm. ah, it'll be, we'll see how it works out, I guess. Yeah. Well, Bendik, you mentioned that there was another new version of SimCraft, <clears throat> which I guess had this, this information taken into account and you were, you were running some Sims. You said you, you did, not only did you do it just for your own personal gear, but you took a look at the, the BIS, which nobody has, but everybody wants to, <laughs> wants to know about and, and, what did you what did you get from that for just from the the preliminary sims that you did? Uh, I think you found that everything was getting very very close now. Yeah, so I only spent like it was literally like fifteen minutes before the show, but uh, I just took like the their default mythic profiles and used those for all the specs. And uh, so for I ran those for marksmanship. Marksmanship was actually the high. This is patchwork fights, and mm -hmm. uh, marksmanship was. Um, the highest at 45,900 and then survival was 45,800 beast mastery was 45,300 so they're all basically within five or six hundred dps of each other which yeah, has never been that close 0.2 percent dps if that's yeah. the only difference i'm okay with that you know, that's, yeah that's as balanced as we're ever gonna see I mean, I know in the past, a lot of uh, we we've talked about it here that you know five percent variation is probably, you know, in the acceptable range. I mean, this is yeah. this is this is pretty much a dead heat. I mean, that's just a standstill fight. Of course, we know by some of the fights we just talked about, there's very few just pure standstill fights. There's a lot of movement going on, a lot of fights with ads and and, and Black Rock Foundry. So I don't know if it changes much, does it, in terms of what you might want to do. I don't think it does yeah. either. It's just it's just more of a like you you feel less bad about maybe playing the less optimal spec. You know, like it's they're so close now. Except for marksmanship AoE, like outside yep. of that. Really. Just That's what know, I'm just thinking play too. Whatever. It is it really is just play whatever and you know for the ones where you're going to have good single target opportunities um you know, if you're if you like marksmanship, then yeah, you 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 just might as well go take marksmanship, and then whatever spec you prefer 
for your AOE. I, I do think it's silly on the heavy AOE fights, though, to, to, to play marksmanship when you can just do so much better with, with beast mastery and, and survival in those situations. I mean, you know, I think that's it. Those are, those are times where you actually will notice a decrease in your damage. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I'm not sure why they insist on keeping marksmanship AOE that low. It's just, it's okay for respect to like have a strength in one area, like mm -hmm. maybe higher single target, but and weaker multi target. But it's like we're talking like a lot. Like we're talking like fifty percent less multi target damage in some cases. It's just like the fact that you have to wait for like seven or eight targets to even use your multi shot. I don't know. I think something's wrong there. I think it should be like if you got three or four targets, you should probably have incentive to use your multi shot. I would think. I, I agree. I mean, there's no reason that um, marksmanship just needs to be single target only, and that it has to have weak weak AOE. I mean, because they've made enough changes this time around that the play style of all three is different enough. At least it seems different enough to me. I mean, with Beast Mastery, the focus now is really on the the pet and the pet damage and and buffing your pet. Um, you know, survival still has its its procs and its lock and load. It just feels different enough. And and now with marksmanship, where you have, you know, aim shot, um, you know, steady shot. There's a lot more casted abilities. I mean, you know, focusing shot is is is, is still even an option. Um, you know, to add if you, if you know you can stand still a little more. Sniper training really influences how you want to play marksmanship too, in terms of limiting the movement capabilities. So, so there, I think there are enough differences there between the three specs that there's no need. Um, for them to not play both single target and um, AOE, you know, at the same level, especially given that the single target damage is so close now. Yeah, I, I think we're really going to need to see marksmanship significantly better than other specs for many hunters to pick it up. A lot of hunters just like the spec. That's great. Um but uh, yeah, without without some buffs to it for standstill single target patchwork, there's not much reason to switch over from survival or even beast mastery. Yeah, I mean, I I agree, and you know, you know how it is too. Once you start tossing out numbers like this, it doesn't matter how close they are. I mean, he could be forty five nine hundred, forty five eight hundred, forty five you know seven hundred, and all you hear is that one top number although with marksmanship people are, are understand that you know it's mostly single target standstill but whatever it serves to be the highest it seems what people gravitate to re whether or not it's it's um the difference even if the difference is small enough that you'll probably never even notice it <laughs> other than the aoe situation which i think you will notice it but beyond that people just will for, yeah, people for, gravitate really fast like in pugs and stuff, it's like good luck trying to find any hunter that's not survival right now. Yeah, they just yeah. don't exist. So, I, I, but now with this, I'm not sure. I think a lot of them will probably just stick with survival because it's so versatile. It's in like every type of fight, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I can, can completely agree. With that, but it is like that. I mean, you know, I've I've heard this too. I remember some we saw some boots drop in Black Rock Foundry with a group, and I forget what the the stats on them. They were versatility and and multi strike, and people were going on about you know, oh, that's like the perfect boots for for hunters. And I I I, I sort of chatting with you a little bit of that Ben deck, and it's like, yeah, versatility is not bad. I mean, it's good, but the difference between say it and crit is so small that it probably is it worth, you know, bending over backwards <laughs> to swap yeah, I out, actually you won know, those versatility. Did you? Yeah. In heroic last night. Um, and yeah, for me, cause I have way too much crit, um, uh, versatility is a lot more valuable right now. So I was drooling a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was a good time. Are you talking about those BOE boots? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I got, I, I, I got a pair of those two with the socket. It's pretty nice. Well, now I don't feel as good about mine. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. I mean, you know, but, but you know, you can go, you can get carried away, and you can look at like, say, like I'm not sure. Like I've got the heroic, I have heroic warforged out of uh, High Mall, and they're the ones from uh, Imperator, and they're pretty good. 
Oh they've yeah, got, those face kickers. Yeah, they've got crit and multi strike on them. So like for me, yeah. Come on, I I I'd, I'd have to sim it out, but I'm pretty sure that's a downgrade. You know, I'm, like that would be a downgrade going to like a six sixty five eye level at that point with versatility and right, multi-strike. right, right. It'd probably oh, it be a downgrade. Be. You know, it would be yeah. So. Yeah, pretty much as long as it's got multi-strike, SV's happy. Yeah. I've had to just quit rolling on things that don't have multi-strike because I'll keep thinking I'm getting an upgrade. Like, oh, this is 10 <laughs> eye levels higher. Surely it's an upgrade. And nope. You know, this is 20 eye levels higher. I'll roll on it. Send it out, and it's a downgrade. So, meh. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't like about what they've done with the the itemization and the gearing now i mean it's it's a little bit harder to tell what's an upgrade and what's not sometimes because you just can't do it on straight eye level that's not a good uh well, I'd indicator say in a lot of cases a lot of cases for bm eye level is the deciding factor because mm -hmm. their stats are so close so it's nice that you can move over for some from survival and like this like bm just likes all the stats anyway but um you know, if there's pieces yeah. of gear dropping that are like haste and mastery and stuff, and like no one's taking them, just take them for your BM off spec because those stats are great for BM, especially yeah. AOE. Yeah. Like haste and AOE for BM is like the top stat by a good margin. More beast yeah, leaves. That's not, yeah. And we have some people in like BM Jaeger in the chat rooms, you know sort of indicating it feels like secondaries trump eye level a lot, which, which I, I think so too. I think you have to look at those secondary stats, which is why I liked, I know Blizzard hated reforging and I know it wasn't yeah. interesting, but it was, it was straightforward and easy to understand. And you could use add-ons that tell you what, what to do, but I guess probably another thing they didn't like, but it just made itemization a lot more straightforward. Right. It made, <laughs> terrible gear not as terrible I don't, exactly. I don't understand why they could think that's a bad thing i saw there's a i actually don't even remember who it was but somebody did a blue post about it recently where they were asking if we could bring back reforging mm -hmm. and they said no it's terrible gameplay and boring and we don't want to do that and i didn't understand their response at all that you know maybe a little hyperbole there but um I, it was just a really weird response yeah i mean i don't i, I don't know what they're thinking it, yeah, I mean, it was boring, I guess, but and you didn't have to put a lot of thought into it. Like I said, you know, sites like Ask Mr. Robot and add-ons and things would do it all for you, but it wasn't something that needed to be compelling or interesting, you know, in my my opinion. Not everything has to be, you know, a giant quest for <laughs> to save the world, right. you know, all well, the, the, add, the features. Whole, the whole add-ons thing and Ask Mr. Robot. I think that was only necessary because of you're juggling your hidden expertise yep. gaps and all that. Yep, exactly. Like, yeah. Without those, you just, okay, I like multi-strike. I'm going to change my worst stat to multi-strike. Sure, sure. You don't need an add-on for that. So, yeah, I, I thought that was the biggest problem with uh, reforging. And when they remove hidden expertise, I'm like, hey, reforging is going to be pretty cool now. Yep. Uh, it's like, oh, no, see ya. Yeah, and that one of their responses was, uh, that, you know, if we get rid of reforging and then when you get a bad piece of gear you have more incentive to get a better piece of gear yeah and i think you know that's that's fine of course we're still going to want a better piece of gear even if we're reforging it to make it not as terrible mm -hmm. you know so if i have a haste mastery piece as survival and i can reforge some of that haste into multi-strike that's going to be a little bit better for me yeah. but it's not going to stop me from wanting a quit multi-strike or versatility multi-strike piece. I'm not going to quit playing because I can reforge. Exactly. And it was one of those things, too, where you kind of made you feel good, too, after you reforged some gear. You know, you feel like, hey, I've just made myself a little bit better here, you know. And, and maybe it wasn't going to translate into huge numbers, but at least it felt like you were stronger than, than where you were, you know, a few minutes earlier, you know. It's maybe not the exact same feeling as when you actually get a piece of gear, but it's, it's, it's along those, those lines of, you know, you feel like you were getting something of value right. when you reforged. So I thought it was a, as a good system as, a, as you pointed out, Bendek, really the big issue, certainly for hunters was the hit and expertise and having to 
juggle the stats around to make sure you got capped first, and then you could start playing around with the other the other numbers. <laughs> and that that's indeed what made it made it complicated. Um, and especially so. at the end of the uh, expansion, there even you know for MOP we had. TOT through SOO, where basically your only goal was to get rid of as much hit and expertise as you could, because there was just way too much on gear. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can get, okay, that was kind of boring, but they already mm -hmm. solved that problem. Yeah, they, they did, they did, but uh, who knows, maybe if, enough, maybe if we scream enough, they'll, they'll bring it back in whatever the next expansion, although... Now I'm getting really way off topic when I mention this. You know, you know what worries me about whatever the next expansion is? I, I don't know if they'll have garrisons again. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And I've, I've been trying to think about, you know, what life would be in this game now without garrisons. And I mean, it's it would seem to me that it'd be almost as much work to kind of design the next expansion without garrisons than it would be to give us new garrisons <laughs> for wherever, whatever we do next. Yeah, and what happens to all of these followers? I've, I've yeah, spent oh, yeah. so much time with them. You have all they're these followers. Gonna, like, have our followers like you know move to the new continent or whatever, or if I they're just going to stay stuck in Draenor. I don't know, but I mean, I mean, you think about how the professions were all redesigned around garrison yeah. as, as well. I mean, that's I was like, okay, what are they going to do now? Am I going to have? Is it going to go back to the way it was? Am I going to have to? Now it's great because I'm at least for me, I've got couple level 100 characters and i'm sure there are people out there with more so i'm running multiple garrisons multiple professions and i'm extremely self-sufficient right now in terms of stocking up for raids and things like that i can i don't have to go hither and right. yon to, to get the herbs and the ores and stuff that, that that i need to make my flasks and my pots and everything else it, it's nice i like it i can enchant my own stuff i can gem my own stuff it's it's crazy and uh and it's all because of the garrisons. And without them, I don't know what they'll what they'll go back to. I I, f I found it much easier to be self sufficient in Cado or MOP. Did you? Because I mean, just jewel crafting was you know you didn't have to have a garrison. I just had to have a alt true true do it and craft everything. You know, so I had billions of gems. I still have a bunch that I haven't even bothered to a vend vendor yet. Um, I, you know, I had tons of everything. And there was no waiting until you got it to level three mm -hmm. or, you know, any kind of dailies. Yeah, there were dailies, but not to the extent that we have it now. So, yeah, it was, I, I do enjoy it. It's fun. I have several uh, level 100s now, and I don't have a use for all of my plots. Like, there's just not, I don't need that many things, and I don't want that many dailies to have to do. So right. I just leave some blank and they just sit there. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with all of them. Well, I like a, having stuff like my, uh, like having an enchanter hut on like a tune without enchanting. It's pretty nice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just to get the crystals. Yeah. Just well, no, to... well, yeah. You can make your own enchants too. Like you can't sell them, but you can put them on yourself. Yep. I've done that plenty of times. And you can DE all that excess gear that you get from missions and things like that. It's nice. Yeah. Especially when, uh, when you're leveling, that's really nice to be able to DE the billions of gear that we get. Yeah, yeah, without having to level an alt with enchanting, I like that. But yeah, I'm not sure what they're gonna do with garrisons because it seems like a, they put a lot of work into it, and if they're just gonna abandon it, I don't know. It seems like they want to carry over some portion of it. I hope they do because, they, like I said, they've really integrated it with this expansion in, into the game, and I've I've gotten very used to it and, and enjoyed it quite a bit, and. I think it would be hard going back to a world without garrisons unless they came up with something that achieved, you know, similar purpose, similar function. But hmm, that's a ways off. Oh, that, I'm looking, you know, I guess we have to wait for 6.1 to come out first. Although I will say this, if the, if the new master planner, I think they did an update recently. I, I hope that one's up to date. Um, because it looks like right now my, my BlackRock Foundry missions are all showing 100% if I up people's gear. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, even with the, with the seven counters? That's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. With the seven counters. Um, so for all, all four of those missions, I think I'll be able to get six of the seven covered. And then there'll be enough other things to 
to bump them up to 100 percent at least that's what the add-on is telling me so we'll 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 we'll, we'll see we might have to do another character copy over to six one well but then i'd have to wait and see if uh those missions come up so i'll wait until six one comes out and see if see how good that add-on is <laughs> um well why don't we do this uh why don't we move on we did get uh one listener email this week so um let's let's get to that and then uh call it a day here uh this was from morgatho and he had a question about gara the spirit beast and he said so one of the first things i did when hitting 100 was to go over to the shadow moon and do the taming quest for gara i used him or her for a few heroics but i ended up going back to using the spirit beast i have been using since i got him in wrath and that was lokwanahawk and he said he named him after big red kitty after he retired it was the first pet i ever spent time camping and have been bm ever since my question is should i feel guilt over keeping Gara in the stables after the epic quest to get him slash her or is it time to let BRK take some time off and that was from Morgatho, Morgatho on the laughing skull I like the fact that we just got a pet question in here huh. yeah I I feel like you Loke is so cool I have no problem with you using him even what, what are we three expansions later now he's uh, still a really great pet no qualms there. Yeah, I don't think anyone yeah. should ever feel guilty about playing with 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 Lokwanahawk. I mean, he's probably you know still one of the most unique looking pets uh, in the game. You know, all these years later. I mean, you know, we're talking seven years now. He was what two thousand eight is when Wrath of the Lich King came out. So yeah, I mean, oh my yeah. goodness, I know it's oh. like it's been it's been that long, and it's still one of the most popular pets, and and certainly hard to get pets in the game. So. No one should ever feel guilty about uh, having Lokwanahawk by your side. As for Gara, I don't know. Yeah, are you guys using Gara much? You BM players? Yeah, I've been using her a fair amount. I mean, I, but I, like, um, like Morgatho, I also tend to go back to my favorite pets. You know, which for me is also Lokwanahawk and uh, my oil stained wolf, which I use quite a bit too. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a cool looking pet. Yeah, I, I don't know. King Crush. <laughs> Can't forget that. No, I've done a terrible job of just sort of managing my my stable, if you will, this time around. I mean, I bring pets that have abilities to raids that I think I might need, but I kind of wrote about this either last week or the week before. But it, I just felt that pets in general are kind of in a weird place because it's the system is is almost perfect. Um, but I feel like something is a little bit off. And I, I think part of the problem is pets can bring everything. They have all this utility now. They can bring all the buffs, debuffs, and, and you know things like battle reses and, and so forth. But with the raid groups being as big as they can be sometimes, I don't feel like I need to bring any of these guys. So it feels kind of wasted that I'm, you know, I don't feel like my pets are bringing anything useless, useful. And the benefit to that should be would be well, now I can bring whatever companion that I want to bring, right? It should be any pet in the stable I want to bring to a raid, I should be able to bring, which is kind of a cool thing. But then a lot of times I'm taking Lone Wolf, so I don't even have a pet. So I, I don't know. I think I think Lone Wolf is really the big culprit in this, more so than the, the redundancy and buffs, debuffs, and, and, and utility. But I think Lone Wolf is probably the, the big, bigger culprit in the angst that I have. Yeah. I with 20 to 30 players every night, we don't, uh, I don't even think about what pets I'm bringing. I just keep my, uh, keep myself stocked with the pets I use for arenas and PVP. And then I'll just switch them over to ferocity uh, for, um, for raid night and switch them back to cunning when that's over. So it's, it is kind of disappointing that that's not part of the hunter experience anymore, planning that out. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to get the buffs now. I've even been in five man groups where it's like, oh, the buffs are covered. Yeah. So, yeah, I see where you're coming from. It's just, I guess now it's just more of, you know, an aesthetic choice. And, and honestly, I think that there's nothing wrong with it being an aesthetic choice. I mean, that's, that's, that's actually pretty cool because for a long time we didn't really have a choice, right? Certainly, I remember, I think back to when you had to bring a wolf for, um, and Wrath of the Lich King, you know. So, yeah, right. you, you just pick your favorite wolf skin, I guess. But, uh, that, you know, 
but you were you were locked into that and you didn't really have have a choice um of course you had fewer that, pets in general but still there was that period where there wasn't much uh spell haste so hunters only brought spore bats that's right you couldn't that's really right. get into a pug without a spore bat yep that's and true. a tall strider mm-hmm. yeah right, you see, that's right, right. right. I remember you wrote about the tall strider for one of the scatter shots it was it was yeah. a, a pretty 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 terrific pet too so the fact that we can bring whatever one we choose is, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really going to complain about that a whole lot. That's actually that's actually good. So, uh, the last thing I guess maybe it's worth mentioning just to be just sort of a quick shout out, congratulations to Michelle Morrow, who she finally got her herself as a follower. <laughs> yeah, for her garrison, Mich- Michelle Morrow song is a. Survival hunter follower that you can get. I, I think it's horde only though, correct? Does someone want to? That's my impression. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I've been searching every week and haven't found her on my horde hunter yet. So mm-hmm. now, can you only get her through the inn, or is there is that where you end up getting her from? Or that's where I've been looking. So I hope so. Somebody correct me in the chat room if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's just just from the inn. Yeah, you just have to get lucky. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing too. Is that you just have to. Um, and you know, and you can't search by class. I think we mentioned that last one of our last shows talking about followers a bit, you know, you, you can only search for traits yeah, and, and abilities. You can't, you can't search for, Oh, I want a hunter or I want a monk or, or whatever. So you just have to go look up some ability that a hunter has and maybe find one that only a hunter has. If there's, I don't know that they're and shoot for that. <clears throat> Maybe you'll get lucky. The uh, the slug slinger in chat brings up a good point about um, the battle res pets in next yes. patch. Yes, they have a forty yard range, which I mean, if you got no buffs to cover, maybe bring one of those. It's always nice to have an extra battle res. Yeah, I agree. There have been times where I have been the only uh, battle res person in in the raid. So yeah, I usually carry a, a crane with me. Uh, as one of my slots, uh, every 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 raid, just just in case it's needed. But as you said, that the twenty yard, the way it is now, has been made it difficult to use, and especially if you need to get somebody up right away, it can be it can be a real pain, <laughs> depending on where where you are and where they die, especially if it's a tank or someone in melee. So this will make it a lot easier now. Well, I think that's all we've got for this week, unless you guys have any other topics or things you want to bring up. I think we could probably just call it a show here. All right. Cool. All right. Yep. You have yep, you have been listening to episode 211 of the Hunting Party Podcast. I'm Dark Brew from thebrewhall.com and the Brew Hall on Twitter. I'm Delirium from thrillofthewild.com and at Delirium Hunts on Twitter. I'm Bendak from Eyes of the Beast, Blizzard Watch, and Bendak Wow on Twitter. Check us out on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, or add our RSS feed to your reader. And these links will be available in our show notes. If you have a question or topics you would like to see us discuss on the show, email us at huntingpartypodcast at gmail.com or send us a tweet and remember to follow us at huntingpartypod. All right. Stay thirsty, my friends, and remember to drink your dark brew lager. Always heed the thrill of the wild. Keep your eyes on the beast. Don't forget to pay your dues. <laughs> well, we had to screw up the outro somehow. Yeah. No <laughs> for the horde. For the horde. A life stealer. That's just the cost of being an awesome song. I forgot I was supposed to say it in Spanish this uh, this week. <laughs> No.
Now let's begin with Illidan, Osirian, and Kilchidan, Magdemar, Ascalon, 